Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our RAM chat about transfer students and getting them connected to Colorado State. My name is Lizzie Zentner, and I'm an admissions counselor here at CSU, and I will be moderating tonight's RAM chat for you. Um, although I am a freshman admissions counselor, I am available to answer questions if anybody does have them. But the first thing we want to do is be sure to introduce the rest of our panel. Before we do that, I want to make sure you know how to get questions in to us to let us know what's going on. You can submit them via a form on our website, admissions.com. Colostate.edu. You can also ask us via social media using the hashtag RamChat. Feel free to use whichever way you'd like to. Um, but for now, why don't we go ahead and meet our panelists. Dustin, do you want to start off and we'll scoot down the way that way? Sounds good. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Dustin Sabo. I am one of the transfer admissions counselors here at CSU, and I work in the Transfer Student Center. And my name is Kiri Hill, and I'm a third-year transfer student here at CSU. I transferred from the University of Northern Colorado, um, and I give I work with the admissions office, so I give all the transfer tours and give tours to incoming freshmen as well. So you can come in on Fridays and take our wonderful tour. Hi, everyone. My name is Ali Fitz. I'm the coordinator for transition programs and orientation and transition programs. And my role is to primarily support our new transfer students coming here to CSU. Hi, I am Erin. I'm a transfer transition leader here at CSU. What that means is that I give tours and orientations to transfer students as well as support them through their first semester here. Um, I am a transfer student myself, and that's me. Hello, my name is Elliot Cooper. I'm an academic support coordinator, which is kind of a fancy way to say academic advisor in the Center for Advising and Student Achievement here at Colorado State University. Hello, I'm Crystal Turner, and I'm a degree analyst in the Registrar's Office, and I process all of the transcripts that come in and evaluate them for credit. All right, thank you all so much. It's very nice to meet everybody. The first question that we have is going to be for Dustin because it's about admissions. Um, the question is, what do you look for in transfer applicants, so admission standards for transfer students? Yeah, the biggest thing that we look at is your GPA, and that GPA is a cumulative GPA, so it'll be based on all of your college credits, no matter where you took them, when you took them or how many credits you have from that school. So even if you took credits in college credits in high school, that will still count towards your cumulative GPA. We also look for math admissions requirements. So there are a few different ways to meet that. The easiest way is with a college level transferable math class, things like algebra or anything higher like calculus or trig. Uh, there are you would need a C minus or better grade in those class. We can only transfer in grades that are C minus or better. Uh, you can also meet it from high school, so if you're transferring in only after one year in college and you didn't take a math class in that first semester, if you had Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2 at high school uh, and you passed each grading period with a C- minus or better, that could also be used to meet the math admissions requirement. There are a few other ways. Um, there are some lower level math classes that you would need with a higher grade than a C-, minus, and those are explained on our website. So definitely check that out to get the full details in the math admissions requirement or give us a call or email and we can look at that. Um, we also look at trends in grades. So if maybe your, your first part of your college career didn't start off all that great, but you've been doing well over the past two or three semesters, we really look at those um, to kind of look at your full academic picture. So it's not just the last semester uh, or it's not just the first semester. We, we kind of take all of it into consideration. So if you have been having upward trends in grades, more A's and B's in the most recent semesters than you might have had it originally, that's a, another way that we can uh, kind of work with students to see if they do meet our admissions criteria. And then finally, we do have some competitive majors. So while our general cumulative GPA is that 2.5 range. Some majors do require higher GPAs like uh, 3.0 for business, 275 for some of our engineering program students if you're not coming from an ABAT accredited school. So be sure to either give us a call or really check out our website. All of the competitive major requirements are there. There are six different majors that could have higher GPA requirements or certain classes that you need to pass with certain grades. Uh, and all that is explained on our website as well. Thank you so much, Dustin. Uh, this next question, I think a couple of you could answer this, so whoever wants to take this can go ahead and go for it. Uh, Chelsea would like to know, what is the best way for transfer students to be become a part of a living community, so like a residence hall floor? 
Um, Erin and I are going to go ahead and take this question. Um, first of all, I just want to let her know that transfer students are not required to live on campus. They absolutely can. And we're actually really excited here at CSU. We have three transfer floors that OTP partners with Residence Life and does programming for and works with. So two of those floors are in Allison Hall, and one of them is in Braden Hall. And if you're interested in living in those floors as a transfer student, the only requirement is that you are a transfer student, which is great. So you're able to live with other new transfer students coming on campus. And I'm going to let Erin talk a little bit about how we partner with those floors. So I actually work with the residence halls um, as a TTL. I get the opportunity to plan events with them, do things with the transfer floors. Um, we did a welcome back dinner. We'll do things like movie nights, game nights. We'll organize things like that so that it's interactive and bridges the gap between orientation um, and transfer programs with the res halls. So that's what we do. And if you're interested in living on those floors, when you um, are going through your next steps after you're admitted and you come to housing, and fill out the housing application, make sure you select those transfer floors. And if you are a transfer student, those floors will appear as an option. So they're just for transfer students. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, this next question is from Jamie. And again, this is kind of whoever would like to grab this. Jamie wants to know, how difficult is it to find housing in the city of Fort Collins? And what about jobs, like in restaurants, things like that? Um, I actually am a transfer student, so I didn't live in the residence halls my first year here at CSU. I found living off campus in um, an apartment complex that was primarily for students. There are various com apartment complexes around um, campus and around the city of Fort Collins that are tailored more towards um, the CSU community, which is really nice. And you can actually go to our off-campus living website on um, the CSU main homepage and find that, and it'll list all of the places that will um, that have apartment complexes for students and then also different rental agencies that you can go through and find um, single uh, houses for you to live in as well. Um, for jobs and everything like that, you can go uh, to the job list on your RAM web once you are admitted and there are tons of job opportunities that you can look for on there and I believe that restaurants do uh, post those jobs as well and and then also students, uh, they have jobs for students as well that are through the university. All right, thank you. This next question is for Crystal. And Ashley would like to know, how many credits can I transfer? Well, you can transfer in 64 credits from a two-year institution. So if you attend multiple two-year institutions, we will cap that out at 64 credits. However, we'll evaluate which credits we could remove, such as electives. If you attend a four-year institution, we can take unlimited amounts of credits. All right, thank you. This next question is for Dustin. How early can I find out that I was admitted? The deadline is June, but can I find out sooner than that? Matt would like to know. Yeah, definitely. Uh, as soon as we have a complete application, so that would be everything that's included in your application file. It's not just your application, but it's all of your transcripts, letters of recommendation, essay, your payment, or your fee waiver that's been approved. Once we have all of that, we typically get a decision within about one to four weeks. So while the priority deadline is March 1 for the fall semester, the final deadline is June 1, we have already have students that have been admitted for this coming fall semester. Uh, as soon as we have a complete application, we'll get that decision for you posted to your applicant status page. So it's really important that you check that out uh, daily if possible. Awesome. Thanks, Dustin. This next question is for Elliot, and Joe would like to know, I don't think my credits will transfer into my major, so if that's the case, what can I do? <laughs> what a question! Uh, uh, that there's not really a single answer for that question. Uh, it'd definitely be a case by case evaluation of what we would, what program you are trying to transfer in. As Dustin mentioned earlier, there are transfer um, requirements for certain programs, specifically the College of Business, the College of Engineering, uh, the Journalism program. Um, biomedical sciences, to name the, the most rigorous programs. Outside of that, many programs will work with you, many departments, I should say, will work with you um, to find elective 
uh, classes or the classes that transfer it in as electives and figure out if they can either one be reevaluated by a particular department so that you can gain credit for them uh, or else they will try to work with you to to possibly waive credits that might seem similar in the future uh, to be um, to be to the point though I would say it's in your best interest to get in touch with an academic advisor in the department that you're trying to transfer into to see exactly what their policy is. Awesome. Thanks, Elliot. Uh, this next question is for Dustin. And John would like to know, do you recommend coming to campus first? And kind of how do I start the admissions process? So kind of a two-parter for you. Yeah, so we definitely encourage you to come to campus. We have visit days every Friday. We have um, information sessions and campus tours that are obviously led mm -hmm. by current transfer students as well. So they kind of give you that perspective of what was it like for them to transfer in, uh, what do they like about campus, where are they living on campus or even off campus, and give you those, those highlights. Uh, it's not necessary to come to campus, so if you simply can't make it for whatever reason, you can't make it to a, a Friday visit, you can't make it to any of our admitted student receptions or, or, or visit campus uh, visit events. Excuse me. Um, you don't have to come to campus if it just doesn't fit into your schedule. You can simply fill out the application online, turn in all of the required documents, and we'll get you an admissions decision that way as, as well. Awesome. Okay, thanks, Dustin. Uh, Sue would like to know when is orientation offered for transfer students? So I think our orientation <laughs> would like to take this one. Sure, we'll take that one. Um, we are offering seven transfer student orientation sessions over the summer. The first one will be offered May 27th, and then the last one will be offered July 17th, and we have a, a number of different dates in between there to fill out those seven sessions. And you can find out all the dates on our website, otp.colostate.edu. And we're actually really excited this year. We're offering an overnight session for transfer students. That one is May 28th to 29th, and that's at no additional charge, um, but you get a chance to kind of get a really full, rich experience and spend the night in a res hall, do some late night programming. Um, so please, if you're interested in that, sign up for that. But yes, um, we offer seven sessions over the summer. Um, and traditionally, they're one day long, except for that new program, which is overnight. So if you have any questions, you can find out more information on our website as well. Awesome. Thank you. This next question is for Crystal. And Julie would like to know, are there benefits of transferring in with an associate's degree? Sure, there are. If you transfer in an Associate of Arts or an Associate of Science degree from a Colorado institution, then that will clear your core requirements. So here we call that your AUCC or your All University Core Curriculum. If you transfer in an Associate degree from out of state, then we will just evaluate it as usual, class by class, but generally that will clear a majority of your core as well. And can I jump in with that too, Lizzie? Um, having an AA or an AS from a Colorado school could potentially, potentially qualify you for a transfer guarantee on the admission side, meaning that you might just need a 2.0 to be admitted to CSU in general, but you would still need to complete the competitive requirements for some of those programs like business and engineering to be admitted to a specific program. So an AA or an AS from a Colorado school, earning it and then coming directly here could potentially get you in with that transfer guarantee as well. All right. Thanks, both of you. That was great. Uh, this is another question for you, Dustin. Will I be allowed to explain my GPA on the application? I have taken long breaks during my education. Yeah, definitely. There's two. There's actually three different areas where you can write information on the application. The first is the essay. The second is an academic explanation area where you can list any poor grades, things like Ds, Fs, incompletes, or withdraws. Or if you've repeated courses, you can let us know what was going on, uh, whether there was a family emergency, a personal emergency, whatever happened. Please let us know what, what happened during that period, because if you don't give an explanation, we just have to assume you didn't know the material or you weren't attending classes. Uh, and then you can additionally, in a third section, list any gaps in, in enrollment. So whether you were in the military, you took time off to have a family, you took time off for work purposes to earn some money, you can definitely explain that in the gap in enrollment section as well. And we don't include summer terms as a gap in enrollment. We're not expecting students to be going to school year-round. So really gaps in enrollment would be if you weren't attending for a spring or a fall term, whether that was one or multiple, uh, we're not expecting students to be going to school year-round. So you don't have to explain what you're doing over the summer. Great. Thanks, Dustin. Uh, this one can be for whoever feels like 
they can answer this. But the question is, as an incoming sophomore, am I able to live with an incoming freshman? Um, yeah, I'll take this one. And yes, you can. Um, when you get your housing application, all you have to do is you both put down the same residence hall and then you put down both of each other's names to uh, live together. I wouldn't say it's a 100% guarantee that you will for sure live together, but I would say your chances are pretty high. All right, thanks, Kiri. Uh, this next question is from Jasmine, and Jasmine wants to know what is the difference between a marketing degree and a business administration degree with a concentration in marketing, and does CSU offer a graphic design minor? I can go ahead and answer this one. The difference between a major and a concentration is just basically kind of what you're looking at in terms of classes. So if you're going to major and have a marketing degree, that's going to be like your bachelor's of science, bachelor's of arts, which you graduate with. Um, a concentration is something that you kind of concentrate on while you're doing that degree. So it's going to look a little bit different, but the sort of short answer to your graphic design minor is yes, we do offer a graphic design minor here at CSU. Um, what we're going to talk about next is going to be a quick question from Blaze, and Blaze would like to know, as a transfer student, after being admitted, when can I register for classes? Um, I'll go ahead and answer this one. So, Blaze, um, you can register for classes once you go through orientation. So, once you are admitted, you follow those next steps, and we want you to immediately register for an orientation session, which you can do, again, through our website and our reservation system. And then you will go through your advising and class registration when you come on campus for orientation. So that's why orientation is so important, because you're able to leave at the end of the day with your class schedule and having met with your advisor. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, this next question is going to be probably for the current transfer students here that can maybe speak to this a little bit. Cody wants to know, will I feel welcomed on campus? What was that transition like for you all? Um, I definitely think you'll feel welcomed on campus. It's Definitely a transition, um, but there are so many ways here to get involved that it's almost hard to miss out on them. So it's like there is SLICE, which is our leadership and involvement office. There's so many ways to get involved. This job gets me involved. Everything about this campus is welcoming, and if you open yourself up to the campus, it truly will open itself back up to you. So that is my suggestion. Just get as involved as you can, and you will definitely feel welcomed here. And just one thing that I wanted to add on to that, uh, the SLICE office actually puts on an involvement fair each at the beginning of each semester, and actually we just had ours today um, in our Loy Student Center ballrooms, and it's just where all of the organizations that are set up through our SLICE office, they go and they table, and you can learn about them, and you can also sign up for them as well. So it's like a, one of the good ways to get involved and get to know all of the different um, or clubs and organizations that we have here on campus. And you can also find things that you're really interested in, and then you can find things that are a little different that you didn't think you would be interested in, but where you really find your community here on campus. All right, excellent. Thanks, both of you. Um, clarification, I misheard, and apparently we do not offer a graphic design minor. So, Elliot, would you like to expand on art stuff a little bit before we move on with a new question? Um, I guess the only uh, expansion on that is that art minors were discontinued a couple years ago. Um, so the uh, graphic design would be either a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Fine Arts. It would be a full major through the art department in mm -hmm. the College of Liberal Arts. Thank you so much for that clarification. Um, this next question is probably going to be for Dustin or Crystal. Um, if Parchment says I have a 91% chance of getting in, does that mean I have a good chance? Is it accurate? Vinny would like to know. So any outside resources that you're using that maybe you don't calculate your complete cumulative GPA, I would be a little leery of. Um, if everything that you're using within Parchment is taking into consideration every class that you've ever taken, uh, it will give you a pretty good estimate, uh, but again, really what we're looking for is that 2.5 cumulative GPA or higher, meeting our math admissions requirement, more A's and B's and C's, uh, especially in the most recent two semesters, no or very few D's or F's, and again, if you do have those D's or F's, providing us an explanation within your uh, application is really helpful. 
Um, really, that's what we're looking for in terms of the admissions requirements. So uh, it really boils down to getting that cumulative GPA. If you've been to one school, it's really easy to figure out what is your GPA there. But if you have been to multiple schools, we do need to do a little bit of calculation to figure out what is your overall academic GPA. And we really need to see that before we can make an admissions decision. So it's, uh, it gets a little bit trickier if you don't have just credits from one school. Uh, so as you're, as you're working in Parchment, if it is creating a, a true cumulative GPA, that could be fairly close. Um, but we'll have to verify everything with official documents that you send in to us. Okay, thank you, Dustin. Um, this is going to be another admissions question. Uh, I am interested in engineering. What are the entrance requirements for that program? Jim would like to know. So for engineering, you need to, if you're not coming from an ABET accredited school, so if you're at a four-year school right now and that school is ABET accredited and you're in an ABET accredited major that's listed on the transcripts, you could be admitted with a 2.5. If you're not at an ABET accredited school, so let's say you're at a two-year school at a community college, the requirements that we'd be looking for are 2.75 cumulative GPA or higher. So again, that's based on all college classes you've ever taken. You would also need to have calculus completed with a B or better. We are not on the plus minus system, so a B minus would not work. It needs to be a B or better, or excuse me, a C or better. Sorry about that. And if you no, you're you're correct. A B or better. Okay, sorry, but thank you. So a B or better, not a B minus though, since we're not in the, the B, uh, plus minus system. So calculus with a B or better. And then you need either chemistry with a B or better, and that chemistry class needs to have a lab, or you need to have physics with a B or better, and that physics class needs to be calculus-based physics, not algebra-based physics. There are a few different physics classes that a lot of students can take. Make sure you're taking one that is calculus-based and not physics-based. Uh, on our admissions webpage, it does list the course requirements that we have at CSU. So if you're using transferology, you can see if it transfers in as a physics class or the chemistry class or the calculus class that re we require. Uh, but definitely calculus and then either chemistry or physics with that GPA if you're not from an ABET accredited school. Uh, there is an ABET search, A-B-E-T. It's a, an accreditation agency for engineering programs. There is a search on our webpage, so you can plug in your current school to see if it is accredited by ABET. So you can determine, do you need that 2.5 or do you need the 2.75 with the required classes? Can I add on to this? Yeah. Um, and my addition is that with the ABET accreditation, it needs to be an ABET accredited program that's an engineering science program, not an engineering tech program. Engineering tech will not get you in. And as well, um, please check with the CSU Registrar's Office to make sure that the chemistry class that you take will indeed transfer in as CSU's Chem 111, that's Chem 111 at CSU, because many chemistries as well, just like Dustin was mentioning with physics, there are different levels, you need to have essentially the engineering grade or medical grade chemistry along with calculus-based physics, which at CSU is PH 141. So check with the Registrar's Office Transfer Evaluation to make sure you're in good shape. Excellent. One other thing I'll add on there is your program at your current school, if it is an ABET accredited school, does not need to match the same program that you're going into here. So you can be in chemical engineering at your current school. If it's ABET accredited, we can use that to get you into civil engineering if you want to get into that. So they don't necessarily have to match up. They just need to be, as Elliot was saying, that ABET accredited program. Okay, this is very thorough. Good. We're getting, we're getting a lot of these questions answered for everybody. Um, this next question is for Crystal. Uh, after the evaluation process, am I able to have courses reevaluated? You are able to have courses reevaluated. We just ask that you contact your degree analyst in the registrar's office, and then we'll let you know the next steps because there's different situations that require speaking to different people. So it's easiest to just start with us, and we'll let you know where to go from there. Excellent. Uh, for students, are there any transfer or commuter clubs, organizations, things like that? Um, so there definitely are things geared just towards transfer students. We do, through our office and orientation, we do transfer communities led by TTLs and other transfer students that are leaders. 
So right now we're offering an outdoor adventure community, which is awesome. They go hiking and do all that good stuff. And then we have an Explore Fort Collins community. Um, and then we have the Res Live community. So those are specific things geared towards transfer students. And we also do like transfer ramp welcome. We do welcome back picnics and dinners and things like that. So there definitely are things geared towards transfer students so that they can meet everyone and things like that. And I just want to add to that really quickly. Um, one thing we also do with the transfer transition leaders, the TTLs, is that if you're a new transfer student coming to CSU, you get assigned a transfer transition leader that you will have seen at orientation because, as Erin said, the transfer transition leaders lead orientation. And throughout your first semester here, you'll get a weekly email from your transfer transition leader that is telling you things going on on campus, asking you how your transition is going, reminding you to join a transfer student community, or if you live in one of the transfer residence halls programs that are going on. So we really do try to support transfer students through that transition, especially in their first semester. And we know that it, especially it's wonderful to meet other people going through that same transition, which is why we try to have a lot of events where we have other transfer students there as well. Awesome. Uh, this is a question for Dustin. What kind of transfer, transfer specific scholarships are available? So we have a few different scholarship options. Some of them are merit-based, so it's going to be based purely on your GPA. Um, there's, RAM, there's the RAM transfer scholarship, and that one does not require a separate application. Uh, as soon as we kind of have our pool of applicants, depending on the number of scholarships that are available, that term, we would award it typically to the top based on GPA. Um, there are also WUI, which is the Western Undergraduate Exchange, about 19 different majors are available for WUI, so that's not quite in-state resident tuition. If you happen to be an out-of-state resident, you're not paying the full out-of-state fees, but you're also not paying the, uh, the lower in-state rate, so it's kind of right in the middle. Uh, the WUI website on the Student Financial Services page will give you the details of which states you need to be in, as well as which majors qualify for that. If you're at a two-year school, there's what is called Phi Theta Kappa. It's an honor society, PTK, uh, you may call it that as well. Uh, as long as you're a member of PTK in good standing for at least one academic term, and you provide us proof of membership by the deadline, you can get a PTK scholarship as well. There's also honors here at CSU, so as a transfer student, you are able to join the honors program. Uh, the honors program does have a separate application, so that's one that you would have to fill out separately in order to be considered for that. Uh, and then additionally, there are things like first-generation awards. If you were a Colorado resident, there's commitment to Colorado. Uh, the Student Financial Services webpage does a really good job of splitting out the scholarships that are specific for transfer students. So if you are able to get on their website, sfs.colostate.edu, highly recommend that you check that out and click on these uh, types of aid at the top and click on scholarships for transfer students to get the full details on deadlines, requirements, uh, as well as any uh, extra applications that may be required for certain scholarships. All right. Thank you, Dustin. This is a question for Elliot. Uh, Jill would like to know, what are the requirements to get into journalism? Yeah, the uh, journalism and media communication degree at CSU requires three things. It requires a transfer GPA of 2.9. That's a 2.9 cumulative GPA, so essentially a 3.0. Um, and also a BC combo, that's B in one, C in the other at a minimum in uh, two journalism classes, one at, at Colorado State University, one is JTC 100, the other is JTC 210. JTC 100 is an intro to mass communications course, and JTC 210 is a news writing course. Uh, the trickiest thing about transferring in in this degree is that people uh, who are going to schools currently in the Colorado Community College circuit are having a lot of trouble finding the JTC 210 equivalent, the news writing course. Um, Front Range Community College currently is not offering this course at any of their campuses, which can be an issue. Um, some people are able to find it at Red Rocks Community College, but um, if a student does not meet these entrance requirements, they can transfer into CSU as an undeclared seeking journalism student and finish the requirement here at CSU, and as long as you get uh, have that BC combo in JTC 100 from wherever you're transferring it from, or if you do it at CSU, and JTC 210, and the 2.9, you are good to go. Great. Thank you, Elliot. 
this is a question for the students, CSU students. Is Fort Collins a good place to get work experience? What about internships that are available? Um, so I think Fort Collins is a pretty good place to uh, get internship experience. I know through my major, which is journalism and um, business marketing, they do offer uh, various things around the city of Fort Collins, but then also here on campus. Um, I actually have an internship right now through CSU Athletics Communications Department, um, working with them and getting some internship hours uh, with them as well. But then also friends of mine have internships with Otterbox and HP and their marketing and communications and journalism departments um, that they actually got here through CSU. So I do think it is a great, um, they have great opportunities here in Fort Collins. Yeah, and I'd also weigh in if that's okay. Um, I am in a marketing club here on campus that informs me of really great internship opportunities and things like that. Um, and I'm also in the communications and business department. And through that, I get a ton of opportunities. And so I think Fort Collins is a really awesome place. I'm graduating in May. And I think that it's a really awesome place for you to get hired because I think they are more accepting of recent college grads, especially if you've gone to CSU. So I think it's a great place to start. Excellent. Uh, this is a, probably going to be a good question for Dustin. Uh, I'm an admitted transfer student. What do I need to do to make sure I'm ready for the fall? Do you want to elaborate a bit on next steps, Dustin? Yeah. So after you've been admitted, you probably saw your decision in your applicant portal, your student application status portal. On that portal, you can let us know your next plans. The very first thing that you'll want to do is submit your enrollment deposit. That deposit allows you to do a few different things, including sign up for orientation, if you're going to live on campus, it also kind of gets you in the pipeline to be able to sign up for uh, on-campus housing. If you're not going to live on campus, you obviously wouldn't have to do that. But the uh, enrollment deposit can be paid online through your applicant status page. The other thing that you want to do is as soon as you've been admitted, make sure you create your RAM web account. That RAM web account is your student portal when you're here on campus, and it really allows you to do the rest of the steps. You need to have that RAM web account in order to sign up for orientation. You have to attend orientation in order to schedule your classes. Uh, also on RAM Web, RAM Web is where you will see your official transfer credit evaluation. So the Registrar's Office will perform that official evaluation after you've been admitted to CSU and get you an official evaluation within 30 business days. So that would be Monday through Friday, not including weekends or holidays. So make sure that you are checking RAM Web frequently to see how your credits have been transferred in pay that enrollment deposit and get registered uh, or get signed up for orientation where you'll register for classes. Thanks, Dustin. Uh, what is there to do on the weekends in Fort Collins? What is there not to do? Who would like to who would like to talk a little bit about weekends? I'll chime in to this one. Um, so there's so much to do around the city of Fort Collins. We're right next to Horsetooth Reservoir, which is about three miles west of campus. Um, it is absolutely a absolutely a beautiful reservoir, but then there's also hiking and biking trails around there for the outdoorsy types. We also have Old Town, which is just the downtown of Fort Collins, which is so cute and has shopping and really good restaurants. Um, but then we have tons of different activities for you to do. There's um, golf courses around campus, um, kind of anything that you're looking for, I'm pretty sure you could find. We do have um, Centero, which is about a half hour, probably 25 minutes away for everyone who loves to shop, which I know is myself, um, to go to. But yeah, there's pretty much a lot to do around the city of Fort Collins, which is really nice. It's a great town, and it's catered to uh, college students a lot, in my opinion. Excellent. I love Fort Collins. It's such a nice place to live. Uh, this is a question for Elliot. Uh, Taylor would like to know, can I meet with an academic advisor before being admitted? Sure. Um, we'd love to talk with you. So um, the traditional way to meet with an advisor is not necessarily to meet with someone through the Center for Advising and Student Achievement. Uh, we primarily work with students who are uh, undeclared to some nature, whether they're uh, trying to meet entrance requirements into a competitive program or they're just not necessarily sure what major they want to be in. Um, if you know the particular department, <clears throat> Excuse me. If you know the particular department that you want to meet with, um, we'd encourage you to reach out and try to meet with that advisor. They would love to talk with you. But yeah, I'd say absolutely because a lot of times we can recommend the best classes for you to be taking to ensure 
transferability of courses and to also talk with you about um, potential jobs and internships that you could be immediately placed into when you arrive at CSU. All right. Uh, Crystal, is it possible to have my courses evaluated before I apply? Sarah would like to know. Sure, it is possible. We ask that students first check Transferology. It's a website where you can create a quick account, uh, transferology.com, and on that website you can locate tons of courses and find out exactly how they will transfer to CSU. If you cannot find a course on that website, then we ask that you contact us in the um, registrar's office and you can do that either through email or through phone. All of our information is on the website. However, if you'd like to request a um, tentative evaluation, you can contact the Transfer Student Center. And that is very useful if you have a specific major in mind and if you've taken um, several um, semesters of coursework. Thanks, Crystal. Uh, this is going to be a good question for our folks over in orientation. Uh, I'm transferring as an upperclassman. What will I get out of orientation since I've already done an orientation before for college? This is a, a great question. We answer this one all the time. Um, we appreciate and understand that you have been to college before. Maybe you've been to more than one college. Maybe you've even been to four colleges before coming to CSU. But what we always tell students is that CSU is a new place and there's a lot to learn. There, as, as Aaron and as everyone has been telling you, there's so much to do, so much to get involved with. And also, as Elliot has been telling you and Crystal, there are different ways that things are done here than at the colleges you were before. And that's what orientation is all about. We're trying to get you into the system at CSU and kind of give you a preview of what things are going to be like and give you your first entry into the community here and get you some of that lingo and get you all set up so that when you step on campus in the, in the fall or in the spring, depending on when you start, you won't feel so out of place. And that's why orientation is so important. That's really philosophically what we're all about, is getting you connected to CSU. And there is a separate orientation for you guys as transfer students than freshmen. So it is geared 100% towards Absolutely. We, we cater it to the needs of transfer students. We understand that you've been through this before. So we leave a lot of the stuff out that perhaps we think you know already, but what's really important is we want you to get that important information that gets you set up for success. Last but not least, at orientation you're going to be meeting with an academic advisor in your department who's going to walk you through all of your classes, give you your advising code that you're going to have, um, so you do need to be a part of orientation so you know what the rest of your degree plan is going to look like. Excellent. Uh, this is a question for Dustin. Corey would like to know, is it possible to establish residency as I'm a student at CSU, so after I've arrived here? Yeah, typically residency takes at least one year to establish, and there are some circumstances where it could potentially take longer or shorter. Um, we are part of the, we are military, military-friendly institution. So if um, you have served in the military by chance, you might qualify for VA benefits, the Yellow Ribbon Program. Really what you'd want to do is contact Student Financial Services to get the full details on your specific circumstance to determine your residency requirements. Uh, like I said, it's typically at least one year, but Student Financial Services will certify residency for the purpose of tuition, whether it's in-state or out-of-state tuition. We collect the information on our application and basically provide it to them to help them determine in-state or out-of-state residency. Their website has a really great tool. Uh, up, again, up at the top of their website, you can click on the residency tab to get all the requirements to become a Colorado resident for tuition purposes. It also talks about their orientations that they have available. They're, they're not orientation where you come and register for classes, but it's an orientation where you can kind of get the ins and outs of residency. You can talk to someone from Student Financial Services in person about your specific situation to determine what exactly you need and what you need to provide to them in order to qualify for, uh, potentially qualify for in-state tuition. And just to add on to that, just a touch, um, it's, this is a very complicated process now and it's definitely something that you absolutely want to talk with the Student Financial Services uh, counselor about. Um, the, the rules and regulations are changing every year in Congress, <laughs> in the Colorado State Congress, so it's definitely something that is worth your time 
Uh, don't make any assumptions. Please talk with our counselors. They're very well educated on this. Excellent. This is really a question for anyone who feels that they can answer it. Uh, how different are classes from a two-year to a four-year school? So kind of what do those differences look like? I guess I'll take the lead on this one. Um, so traditionally, when you come to a four-year institution, you're going to be working more in your upper division classes, which at CSU are our 300 and 400 level classes. Um, 300 essentially being your junior year classes, 400 being your senior year classes. You're going to see, um, potentially you're going to see more academic rigor, um, but more specifically you're going to have a more specific focus on the classes uh, that you're taking. They're going to be obviously driven more towards your specific degree and potentially the concentration of your degree if you have an option for concentration inside of your degree. Um, it's also good to note that uh, the vast majority of our upper division classes are um, 40 seats or less. Uh, so you get a lot more one-on-one um, -on -one time with your professors and have a lot more opportunity for interaction in class. Awesome. Uh, this next question is for current students. Are there ever events like job fairs at Colorado State? Yeah, so um, depending on what major you go into, you will get emails letting you know when there's like a career fair coming up. So me, um, since I am in both the College of Business and the College of Liberal Arts, I get emails from both of them letting me know like, hey, next Wednesday in the Lori Student Center there is a, college, or a career fair for you from 11 to 3. And this is actually a really great way for you to get those internships that you're looking for um, around the city of Fort Collins or um, even like around the country which is really nice. So they definitely update you as to when those are. Um, they just don't have them like randomly. They're planned and they will definitely update you. Awesome. Add on again. Go for it. Dr. Lizzie, sorry. Um, yep, so six planned career fairs, three each semester, always happen and then um, there are additions by each of those uh, colleges. For instance, the College of Business um, their counseling, the, the Career Center has uh, different career counselors in every single college that, are act, that act as liaisons between the college and the Career Center um, and they bring in specific people. So for instance, tomorrow uh, JBS, which is a very, very large business in the state of Colorado, is coming in to speak specifically with College of Business, represent, uh, excuse me, College of Business students to talk about finance, accounting, and um, actually commercial real estate opportunities within their corporation. So we do a lot of uh, target marketing based upon those things, but every each semester there will be a minimum of two, but hopefully three uh, career fairs and job fairs that are uh, oriented to the entire student population at Colorado State. Awesome. Uh, this next question could be really for anybody that knows about this sort of stuff. Um, I'll be commuting 45 minutes to campus. Are there places to relax between classes? Um, I'll take this one. Yeah, there are tons of places. We have the Oval, which is like more of the historic district of campus. Um, when it's nice out, that's always a great place to bring your laptop um, and start some Netflix and watch that and relax if you want or do some homework which I think is more recommended. But then our Lori Student Center has a nice huge uh, food court where you can get lunch and sit at the tables and relax or they have the sunken lounge also in the student center which is just kind of like a lounging area with a bunch of um, chairs and couches and there's a nice little quaint fireplace where you can hang out as well um, but then also I find like the library is a great place to just kind of hang out in between classes um, since you can check out computers and sit at the in the computer garden and everything like that so there are definitely a lot of places to hang out in between classes. Awesome. Thanks, Kiri. Uh, I think probably orientation transition might know this. Allie, you might know the answer to this question. Um, I'm an adult student with a family. Are there child care options at CSU while I'm in class? Um, yes. Uh, adult Learner and Veteran Services is an office on campus 
dedicated to helping adult learners and veteran students get connected and find those services they need as far as childcare. We actually have um, Ram Kids Village here at CSU, which caters to our um, students who happen to be parents and have family members, children that they want to be taken care of. And Ram Kids Village, I don't exactly know the details because I haven't looked on the website in a while, but I know what you can do is go to the ALVS website, the Adult Learner and Veteran Services website, and there's a link to Ram Kids Village where you can find out how you can get in, what the hours are, but it's located right here on campus, which is so convenient if you're coming to class and you need to have childcare. So I know that's an option for our student parents. Excellent. Uh, this next question is for Elliot. Jose would like to know, I am interested in business and I know it's competitive. What are the requirements? It is competitive. It is the most competitive college of business in the state of Colorado. Um, and um, currently the transfer requirements are as follows. You need to have, first off, a 3.0 cumulative GPA in transferring. Second, you need to have a B minus or better so they do accept plus minus system. So 80% or higher in a business grade or management grade calculus. Again, please check with a degree analyst such as Crystal to um, figure out exactly what class will work. If you can't find it on transferology at Colorado State University, that class is Math 141. The other class in which you need to have 80% or higher is a microeconomics course, which at Colorado State University is Econ, E-C-O-N 202. So recap, 3.0 cumulative GPA, 80% or higher in a management calculus, 80% or higher in a microeconomics. I just want to I just want to throw in there that it, it is micro. We see all the time when we're looking at the applications macro. Unfortunately, macro does not count for the admissions requirements. So just like Elliot said, make sure you're taking micro, M-I-C-R-O, not macro. Excellent. Thank you both. Uh, this next question is, uh, are transfer students eligible to play sports at CSU? Absolutely you are. Um, but do any of the current students want to elaborate on the different types of sports we have, intramurals club, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, so we have club sports. We do all those kinds of things here. Um, one thing I recommend to all my incoming students is IMs, intramural sports. Um, getting involved in those will allow you to meet a ton of people. And if you don't want to play super seriously, like on a club team, it's a really good option. And you can be like a floater and have teams pick you up. And it's a great way to meet people. And we offer pretty much every sport through IM. So. Um, if you're thinking about a D1 sport at all, I know that was kind of geared towards like the more fun side of it, but if you're all thinking about a D1 sport, make sure that you're filling out the recruit questionnaire form on the CSU Athletics webpage. Each sport has that recruit questionnaire form. It's really the best way to get in contact with coaches um, because there are periods due to NCAA regulations where they cannot contact you. So you may be trying to contact them, but they legally can't contact you back during those dead periods, those blackout periods. So make sure that you are filling out that recruit questionnaire. Uh, there's a lot of rules and regulations that go into transferring and still being eligible to play in a D1 level. This doesn't really apply to the intramural sports or to the club sports on campus. But again, if you're a D1 athlete, D2 athlete, anything like that, and you want to transfer in and compete competitively at the D1 level, it's important to fill out that recruit questionnaire form online. Thanks, Dustin. Uh, this is a good question for you. We're going to throw it back to you, Dustin. Can you explain what the transfer guarantee is? So the transfer guarantee says if you earn your AA, your Associate of Arts, or your AS, your Associate of Science, from a Colorado two-year school, and you have a 2.0 cumulative GPA or higher, you are guaranteed general admission to CSU. It does not count if you get your AA or your AS from a school outside of Colorado because we don't really have the control over what an AA or an AS looks like from any other state. It also does not guarantee you admission to competitive majors such as business, um, engineering, journalism, technical communications, art, computer science, or biomedical sciences. Those are our six competitive majors. So it guarantees you general admission to CSU but if you're thinking about a competitive major, you still have to have those requirements met. We have to see the Associate of Art listed on your transcript with the date that it was awarded. 
So if it's in progress when you apply, we'll review you based on the general admissions criteria. But if you send us in an updated transcript and it shows that your Associate of Art or Associate of Science was awarded from that Colorado to your school, that can work. And keep in mind, you have to come to, you have to, come to from, get your AA or your AS, go somewhere else, and then come to CSU. You have to get that AA or AS and then come directly to us. And, and all the full regulations that I just kind of went over, they're definitely on our website if you want to reference that as well. Excellent. Uh, this is going to be a question that kind of tag teams between Dustin and Crystal. Are test scores required, and how will I find out if test credits transfer? So, Dustin, do you want to start if test scores are required? Required. So, test scores are not required for transfer students. ACT, SAT, Advanced Placement, AP, Inter International Baccalaureate, IB, they're not required for a transfer student you are definitely more than welcome to send them in because they could potentially earn you some credit and I'll, I'll throw that over uh, to get that question answered. Sure, you can find out how courses, how test credit is going to transfer by uh, researching transferology again or also on our website we have everything listed so all of the um, previous years as well are all on our website, the registrar's office. All right. Um, One thing I right. throw in there, keep in mind with AP scores, they need to come directly from College Board. We cannot accept them on a transcript from a college or a high school. So make sure you send in your test scores from the testing company. Send them directly to us. All right. Thanks, Dustin. Uh, for all of the, especially Curie Current Transfer students, uh, if you had one piece of advice for an incoming student, what would it be? Um, I would say don't hesitate to get involved. That could be your biggest mistake. Just jump right in, get involved right off the bat. Um, you'll get a lot more opportunities that way and you'll find that you're really going to enjoy your time. If you wait, it's going to be a little bit harder to get involved. So I would, so say, I would say... Awesome. Does anybody want to expand on that? or are we good? Um, Yeah, I can expand on that. Sorry about that. But I completely agree with Erin. Definitely get involved as much as you can. Um, really get to know the different parts of campus, especially um, that are like are with your major or things that you're interested in. Um, I know that when I first transferred in, I kind of laid back a little bit. I didn't get as involved. Um, and I didn't feel like I was completely having the best CSU experience I could, but then as soon as I went into the Slice office and I learned a bit about all the different clubs and organizations, I really felt more involved and I found my community here at CSU. Um, CSU is a lot bigger school, a lot bigger of a school than my previous institution, and so I kind of felt like one person in the crowd for like the first two weeks, but then I really found my community here um, through the different organizations that I got involved in, and it really made CSU feel like a second home, and I have enjoyed it ever since. Awesome. awesome. Okay. okay, we're about to wrap it up here for the evening, but the last question that I want everybody to answer before we wrap things up is, what is your favorite thing about CSU or Fort Collins? Okay. Oh gosh. Okay. Um, my favorite thing about CSU would be attending the sporting events. There's so much fun. There's so much life. There's just so much love for the campus. Everyone's a ram. You're all there together. It doesn't matter who you're there with. You're all one. And so I think attending the sporting events has to be my favorite part. There's so much school pride. And um, I think my favorite part, I'm, I'm not a student, I'm an employee, but I'm fairly new, and I think it's the community. I really felt welcomed, even as an employee, right away here at CSU, and I noticed that other students, you know, just go up to people on campus and ask them questions, especially if you're new, and I, I think as, as transfer students that I work with have told me, there's a really strong sense of community here at CSU, so I think community is my favorite aspect about CSU. I guess um, my favorite part, honestly, has to be the outdoor activities. I'm from Ohio, so it's very flat there. So I like being able to actually go into the mountains. 
and probably actually seeing the sun in the wintertime versus the gray Midwest is definitely a plus for me. Um, mine is definitely the community as well. Uh, I touched on this earlier, but we are such a huge community. But once you find like your smaller community within our large Ram family, um, that's awesome. But then also going to the sporting events, especially the Rocky Mountain Showdown, which is the big CSU football game versus CU, um, which is played down at Sports Authority Field where the Broncos play. Um, that just really kind of shows how much of a team we all are and how great our community is. Um, and I think that is definitely the best part. I'm a newer employee as well, and I enjoy the environment. Um, I'm also from the Midwest, and there's sunshine all the time. There's barely been snow. It's been amazing. And everyone's very welcoming and friendly. I, I, I love everything about CSU. Um, I have kind of a different story in that I came here for my undergrad originally, and then I graduated, and then I did a series of things, including a couple of jobs. Uh, I was a Peace Corps volunteer, and that uh, ended up bringing me back here for my master's. I have an MBA through CSU's Global Social Sustainable Enterprise Program, which then took me to an international nonprofit, and I lived all over the world again, which then brought me back here to CSU again. I keep coming back to Fort Collins. I keep coming back to Colorado State University. It's an incredible environment. It's academically rigorous, and uh, it's an incredibly supportive community. Um, my favorite thing about Fort Collins is that I can ride my bike anywhere all the time and have a great time doing it. It's got a really uh, friendly community for that. There are great restaurants everywhere. It's just a great place to hang out. So come on down. Awesome. I second everything everybody said. I love the community. The people here are awesome. The weather is great. I'm a CSU alumni. So they must have done something great here because they just stuck around to work for them after I graduated. So I love Colorado. I love Colorado State. Um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in, watching us tonight. If we didn't get your question answered, we will get it answered for you in the next couple of days. So stay tuned for that. We will try and get all of those questions answered for you as quick as we can. We do have a couple different upcoming events for transfer folks. Do you want to talk about those real quick, Dustin, before we end? Yeah, so coming up on February 13th, we have Transfer Student Visit Day. It's really our big comprehensive visit day uh, for anybody who's thinking about transferring in. talks about the transfer process. Uh, well, there'll be student panels there as well. You'll be able to tour campus, uh, eat on campus. It's really a, a great day to get all of your questions answered. Talk to different offices from around campus and, and be able to kind of get everything hashed out before that March 1 deadline comes up uh, for the fall semester. We also have for anybody who has been admitted, there is Choose CSU. Choose CSU is really kind of a choose your own adventure type day where you'll be able to come on a Saturday. You'll be able to go around campus to check out any area that you're really interested in, really focus in on those areas. So whether you want to talk to someone in student financial services, you want to go to an academic session, you want to talk to someone from orientation, really whatever you're looking to get answered or explore, you're able to do that without having to really worry about when is that going to take place. It really is up to you. Whatever is happening that looks good to you, you're able to go to that. Um, so those are coming up on various Saturdays, one a month in February, uh, March, as well as in April. So those are specifically for admitted students. Transfer Student Visit Day will be for any student, whether you're admitted or still exploring your options. And then we also have every Friday transfer student information sessions and tours as well. Led by me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, awesome. thank okay. you again to all of our panelists for, for, for a little bit, getting all the questions answered. answered. If you have any additional any questions, questions, like I mentioned, you're welcome to get in touch with the counselor, get those things going for you. Otherwise, have a great rest of your night. Thanks for joining us, and we'll chat with you soon.